On this video, we'll be going over the basics of tracking animals. Coming right up. Hello and welcome to Eco Elsa. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Elsa and I make videos to help kids and adults get outdoors. On this week's video, we'll be going over the basics of tracking animals outdoors. I will be going over with you three basic skills that will be helpful when identifying tracks and finding a good location to look for them. So let's get started. For number one, you need to know where to go to look for animal prints so that you actually have animal prints to identify. This will vary depending on where you live in the country and what time of the year it is. But some really good tips are looking for a place that has water available, food available, or cover for wildlife. These are go-to places where you'll find more animals and be able to identify more tracks. Additionally, looking for places that are a little bit more wet or muddy will allow for more clear animal prints for you to try and identify from. And lastly, if you're blessed to be in an area where it snows, winter is the best time of the year with snow for tracking animals. It's one of the most clear ways to see animal prints besides mud. And it's a lot more available, so this time of the year in Minnesota or if you're somewhere else with snow, you can pretty much look for animal tracks anywhere. So congrats, you can get started immediately if you'd like. Number two. So congratulations, you found some animal footprints. Now you need to try and properly identify them. So the very first step is to count the number of toes. So I've put together this nice handy dandy chart to help you out. There's a lot of stuff online that can also be very helpful. So make sure to check that out as well. I will also be putting together my own tracking guide as soon as possible. I also have in the description below some different tracking guides that I like to use, especially when I'm out with kids or with a hiking group. So make sure to check those out if you're looking to buy your own tracking field guide to use when you're outdoors. So let's get started. So for starters, you have your one toe or basically no toe type footprints. These are going to be things like horses, humans, as long as they're not barefoot, and then also rabbits. So this is the two big feet and then the two little feet in the middle. Rabbits have such fuzzy feet that they tend to not have their toes show up, even though they do have four toes in the front and four toes in the back. So just keep that in the mind for future if you do potentially come across rabbit toe marks. I have yet to ever see them and I've been tracking for years so if you find some super cool take a picture of it. Next we have our two-toed animals. These are mostly going to be animals with cloven hooves here in the US so it's going to be mostly things like deer but you could also potentially have bison and elk and moose and bighorn sheep and mountain goats. You get the idea. So. Keep in mind that how you'll tell those animals apart is based on the size of the footprint and the shape of the toes, as a deer is much different than a bison. Next we have our three to four toe area. So these are gonna be mostly bird species are the ones that you will see. So bird footprints can come in all varieties based on what they're using their feet for and how they're surviving. So you can have more of the little perching type birds, the toe on the back. You can have more birds of prey where their back claw won't show up or it'll show up as a dot. Woodpeckers tend to have an X mark footprints and then you have all your different water birds that have webbed feet. So this is kind of the general idea. Um, if you find something a little bit different make sure to look it up but these are the most common ones that you will see. Next we have our animals that are strictly four-toed in the front and the back and these are going to be our canines and our felines. So how you tell the two different groups apart for the most part is cats claw marks don't tend to show up in the snow or their print because they have retractable claws and dogs don't have retractable claws so their claws tend to show up as these dots in front of the toes in their footprints. Uh, additionally, wild canine's footprints tend to be more oval shaped and wild feline footprints tend to be more round shaped and domesticated felines too. Next we have a little bit of a tricky group, the footprints that come with four toes in the front and five toes in the back. And these are gonna be mostly rodent species. So these are gonna be things like mice and rats and squirrels and chipmunks and woodchucks. And all of their footprints are going to vary pretty differently in size and in shape. But the big thing is that their front toes will only have four and their back toes will have five. And since the prints are also so small a lot of the times, you'll have to keep an eye 
and look at multiple footprints in a trail to make sure you're not accidentally missing a toe here or there. And lastly, we have our animals that come with five toes in the front and five toes in the back. They're gonna be things like badgers and wolverines and raccoons and skunks, uh, otters, weasels, you're getting the idea but all of them vary quite differently in the shape of their footprints and feet and how they move their bodies. So there's gonna be a lot of extra details that you're going to have to consider when looking at these prints to figure out which of these animals it is. So this is a nice chart. It's just to get your animals footprints into different groups to make it easier for identifying it from there. So we're kind of narrowing it down here by using this. Remember, counting the number of toes is just a way to organize it and narrow it down to a group of animals. This group could be a whole family of animals or a whole order of animals. So keep it in mind that there might be a lot of different prints that you're dealing with and you're not going to be able to perfectly identify what animal it is based just on a single footprint. There's a lot more that goes into it. You'll be looking at the gait, how the animal's moving, the size of the prints and the size of the animal based on its gait and all of its footprints, uh, as well as any of the environmental factors or clues around it like scat or what it's been eating or if it has a home nearby that you find. So let's get to our third and final tips to help you with identifying your animal tracks which will be the size and shape of the tracks and the gait of the animal. So the next thing we have to do is look at how the prints all fit together. So basically we're looking at how this animal was moving when it was leaving its footprints. First we have walking. This is a little bit more simple and you tend to see with a lot of animals that are lowered to the ground or just you know they tend to chill as they're moving through the world. And how these grouping of footprints work is the F stands for front and B stands for back. And usually what you'll see is two feet on one side of the body closer together and then the other two farther away and then it will switch. So this means this animal was moving at a little bit of a slower pace and they were able to swing their back leg forward enough to where the front foot was on the opposite foot. If you need a little bit of help with understanding this one, just look up online to see how a bear moves or a porcupine or a raccoon when they're walking. Next we have trotting. Now trotting, for most of the animals that do trotting, they're kind of going at a nice even pace and for things like foxes, coyotes, cats, and deer, because they're moving at such an easy strolling pace, they have a really nice rhythm down and so what happens a lot of the time and what I've shown here is that the back footprint is actually falling perfectly in the imprint of the front foot and so it looks like they're walking around on two legs which we know they're most likely not doing because deer and cats and coyotes don't walk up on two legs except for in cartoons. Now you don't tend to see this with domesticated dogs which makes this a great way for telling the difference between domesticated dogs and wild canines. Next we have galloping which is a little bit different than bounding and hopping because the foot that's the farthest forward uh, usually switches off. Think of about a horse galloping and that motion of them stretching their leg out and then as they come down it's able to push the other leg farther out. So it's like almost like elastic, like a rubber band, and it's alternating between feet. So it's not quite boing, 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 it's da-dunt, da-dunt, da-dunt. <laughs> then we got the bounding or hopping. So this is going to be more of a bouncing motion. You see this with things like birds, rabbits and squirrels, but also things like weasels and otters. But theirs will be more in a grouping of four, where it's like bounce, stretch, bounce, stretch, bounce versus birds with these two little feet right here are as kind of a bounce, bounce, but they're doing it with two feet. Almost think of like a kid with their two feet together as they hop. Then you have things like squirrels and rabbits that are moving similar to weasels and otters where the front legs are coming down and then the back legs are coming down except for they almost overextend when they push them together. So their back legs are these larger dots and will come forward in front of their front legs. So it almost looks like this where their front legs go down and then they bring their back legs forward on the side and they push off their back legs. They land with their front legs and then the back legs come around on the side again and they push off their back legs and you get the idea. So if you, once again, if you need any help with figuring out how all these different motions work and how they look, go ahead and watch some videos online of deer galloping and running and squirrels and rabbits bouncing and weasels bouncing and you'll get an idea of how these motions work and what those footprints would look like when they leave them. So the final part of step number three is actually measuring the footprint and looking at the shape of it and its toes. To try and figure out what species it is, 
based on the size, based on the number of toes, and based on how the animal was moving. So what you're gonna wanna be measuring is the width across the footprint, usually in the middle is where it's at. And then once again, the length of the footprint through the middle for how long the footprint is. Most animals have a rough grouping for how big or small their footprints get. So this can be very helpful in comparing the difference between a fox and a coyote and a wolf and a house cat and a cougar because a house cat isn't going to tend to have three inch wide paws. It just, it's not what they tend to have. So this will be the final step to help you make your best guesstimate for what type of animal it is based on all these factors that you have gathered thus far about your set of footprints. Then for things that have five toes, it tends to be the shape of the footprint. So things like a raccoon versus an opossum. They both have five toes, but their feet, especially their front and their back feet, tend to look very different compared to each other. So that makes that very helpful. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you some final tips while I show you some examples of animal footprints in the snow here in Minnesota. So just keep in mind that the footprints you come across might be a little bit different depending on where you live because of the amount of snow you receive or the time of the year it is or the size and type of animals that you come across. In Minnesota we have might have different squirrels than you have and our footprints might appear differently than yours do. So just keep that in mind. These are for examples to help you get the feel of how you go about analyzing footprints, how you start and get going with it. So what's really cool is I found a set of deer prints that actually has direct registering showing up in it so that you can see what it is I'm talking about. So for a little bit for perspective, if you follow the deer trail, it looks like the deer is walking with two feet, right? Right, left, right, left, right, left. Now, we zoom in on this print right here. See, you can actually see, it looks like this was probably the front, no, nope, this was probably the front foot and this looks like it probably was the back foot since it looks like this front print is on top of the other print. So this is one print that didn't perfectly directly register within itself, which is what's giving away that this is a deer that's doing a trotting type speed and it's not completely direct registered in its footprint. And if you look at the one to the right of it also, that one also has the same thing going on. So see, it's not perfectly inside the other print. So that's the kind of thing that you're looking for that gives it away that this deer was going at a nice steady trot. So here we have a trail of prints from a deer it looks like, and it was galloping through the woods so now you can better see what I was talking about, how the prints will all be together. And then one print on one side will be in front, and then on the opposite side, the other one will be in front. So here, let's take a closer look at them. So this is fairly fresh, because if you look at my print, see all the snow is caving in on mine. But since I don't have toes, it doesn't matter, because it's still going to be one blob anyways. So you can take a look. And then here's where you can tell that it's a deer. It's right in here. Do you see the two toe marks? I can see them. So hopefully it's clear enough for the camera to see them. But yeah, this was a deer. There's a better one. And it was galloping through the woods at a nice breakneck speed. See, so yeah, I can see the toe marks here too. So it was taking off. So something must have spooked it into a run. So that's the kind of galloping, bounding I was talking about that deer do. So here are your final tips then to help you with getting started tracking. For the most part, what I've shown you today will help you with the very basics of tracking, but there is a lot more that goes into it and a lot more to learn. So just keep that in mind that do some more research and some learning if you want to get a little bit better at this. There's always a chance to learn more. I'm always learning when I go out tracking and I love doing it because it's like a big mystery clue hunt looking for what animal this is and what it was doing. So your very first tip is to make sure to not look at only one set of footprints. Follow the animal's trail, look at as many of the footprints as you can until you get a really good feel for how this animal was moving, how big it was, 
uh, how many toes it has because you've seen multiple footprints in the snow or the mud. By looking at more than one set of prints along a trail, it'll help you learn more about identifying as well as making a better guess for which animal you think it is based on its footprints and how it was moving and all of the like. And my final tip for you is to make sure to consider the environmental factors around you. Make sure you're keeping an eye out for scat, for fur left in branches, for signs that it was eating something, or that it has a nest or a home nearby, any feathers it left. You know, whatever the case may be, make sure you're keeping an eye out for other things around your set of prints so that you don't miss something that might be a key clue to help you figure out what type of animal it is and what it was up to. So I hope you all liked today's video. Unfortunately, that is all we have for today. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos on tracking to help you improve upon your skills. And if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Eco Elsa, as well as to ring that little bell button below. That way you can be notified the second my videos are up on YouTube. Also make sure to click on my description below because I have links to tons of other things that I mentioned in this video, like the tracking books to help you get started tracking outdoors or teaching tracking outdoors as well as I have a link to my email list that you can join to get monthly resources for free and also links to my social media accounts where I post tons of free resources to help you and your kids get outdoors as well so make sure to check all of that out so I hope you had fun today I know I did showing you guys around and some cool tracks so as always I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week you be safe learn lots have fun and get outdoors bye